Okay, hey guys, welcome. And we're really excited to share a little session today with you where we're gonna cover a couple topics. The first one is how to find the angle of your knife using a Sharpie marker and your Wicked Edge sharpener. And then the second section will be how to find the sweet spot, which we, what we mean by that is how you position your knife in the clamp to get the best, most even bevel all the way along the length of your blade. So let's dive right into finding your angle. You know, what has already been ground onto your knife that you're about to sharpen. So here you can see a pocket knife that we've got mounted up in our new WE66 series sharpener, which we're, by the way, really excited about. And this is a nice sneak peek for you guys. So we're hopefully gonna bring this thing out next fall. But let's dive right in about finding your angle. First, let's cover some te terminology. In today's session, we're interested in the edge, the shoulder, and the bevel. And so the bevel is just that portion in between the shoulder and the edge. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is color your, your whole bevel in with a marker. And usually a Sharpie or some other permanent marker is perfect for this job. So you're gonna take your marker and you're gonna put it right up on the edge of your knife, almost like you're stabbing down onto the knife with the marker and you're gonna color in both bevels at once. So it's gonna get both sides of the blade for you in one smooth pass. And the advantage of doing it this way, well, there's a couple. The first is that it colors in both sides. It's very quick and generally doesn't leave very much spillover onto the flats of the blade, so you don't have very much to clean up afterward. It's just a lot more convenient, easier than trying to come in from the side and color it in by hand. So you get your bevels all colored in now, and you're gonna take a stone. Generally, we like to do a fine stone, and I also like to start at a slightly wider angle. So if I'm guessing that my bevel might be around 20, 22 degrees, maybe I would start at 25, for example. It's much better to start wider and be wrong than it is to start more narrow and be wrong. Because if you start more narrow and you're wrong, you could put scratches on the flat of your blade that are gonna be impossible to get out later. Whereas if you, you know, if you take a little bit of extra off the edge, it's really not gonna hurt anything, especially if you're using a fine stone. So go ahead and put your fine stone on the rod, set it to an angle that you think is slightly wider than the knife has, and then run your stone along the blade, maybe one or two passes, and just see where the stone removes the marker. So it would look kind of like this. Your stone just runs along the edge or runs along your blade and removes some portion of the marker. And what that's helping you do is visualize where the stone is interacting with the blade by what's removed. Wherever it's removing marker is where it's hitting the blade first. And in this scenario, you can see that it's just removed the marker towards the edge and it's not getting down closer towards the shoulder. And what that's telling us is that our angle is too wide. It's, it's out too far. And in this illustration here, you can see how the stone is interacting with just the very edge up there, or maybe, you know, a little bit of the top portion of the bevel, but it's definitely not getting down by the shoulder. And so what we want to do in this scenario is just move the angle into a lower angle and try again. The second scenario is just the opposite of that, right? So we've, we've colored our bevel back in after we've made some adjustment and we run our stone down the blade, and instead this time, it's taking the marker off down by the shoulder. Okay, so what that's telling us is just the opposite of before, that our angle is too narrow, right? You can see in this illustration that the stone is interacting just with the shoulder there. Let me zoom in just a little bit for you. So you can see the stone's just hitting the shoulder there, and if I were to continue in this position, I would have a lot of metal to remove before I was able to reach the edge, and I would have a much bigger bevel. So what this is gonna tell me is that I wanna move my angle out to a wider angle. And ultimately what we're looking for is a scenario where the stone lies flat on the bevel. And you know when you run your stone along the edge, it's gonna take the marker all the way off along the whole length of the blade. And then that's your ideal scenario where you have found the angle of your knife. So that's the first part of today's session. Let's jump right into the next part, which is gonna be what we call finding the sweet spot. And this is the front to back position of your knife in the clamp. You know, where's the tip and the heel of the blade in comparison with the clamp? So here's a little illustration of the knife just straight on from the side. And you can see that I've got some, some things marked in there, the back of the vise and the transition of the straight section to the curved portion or the belly of the blade. And for a starting point, when you mount your knife up, this is always a good rule of thumb. Look at the straight portion of your blade and position it right at the back of the vise 
you know, right where that transition happens towards the belly, put that right at the back of the vise. And by the back of the vise, what I mean is that portion of the, of the sharpener that's away from you, that's closer to the tip of the knife. So if you've got your knife in the clamp, generally the handle is going to be facing your, your chest or facing you, and the tip is going to be facing away. So we're talking about the portion of the vise that's closer to the tip on the back side. We want that transition from straight to curve to happen, you know, right about that back portion of the vise. It's an excellent starting point. So this, in your first case, you've got your knife mounted like that, and one of two things is going to happen. You're going to color in your bevel with a marker, just like before when we were finding our angle. You just color it in just like that. And then you're going to take a stone and you're going to run it along the length of the blade. So in case one, what's happening is that the stone is creating a track through the marker that looks like what we're seeing here. It's taken the marker at the very edge of the blade back at the heel. But then when you look up at the tip, you can see that it's taken the marker from the shoulder. So we've, we've gone from the edge down to the shoulder in case one. And this one we definitely wanna correct for because what's gonna end up happening if we keep sharpening in this position is that we'll end up with a really wide bevel at the tip. We'll have kind of a, a narrow angle up there and a very wide goofy looking bevel. So we wanna correct that. And the way that we do that, and again, here's just a depiction of what's happening there. That blue dot represents the stone interacting with the knife as it moves along and it drops down there to the shoulder. And so what we do to correct that situation is just move the tip of the blade closer to the clamp. So we're moving it backwards towards you and towards the clamp. And that's gonna help us end up with a more even bevel there at the tip. Okay, so case two is just the opposite of case one. You know, again, we color in our bevel with a marker and then we put our stone on and we observe how the stone tracks through the marker. And in this case, we're starting at the shoulder back by the heel and then we're rising to the tip. So here we are, you can see the little blue dot again back there at the, at the heel, it's down on the shoulder and then it's coming up towards the edge at the tip. And in that scenario, what we're gonna end up with is a really small bevel at the tip and kind of a normal size bevel along the straight portion of the blade. So to fix that, it's just the opposite. You're gonna move the tip further away so that it's further from the clamp. You're gonna push it away from yourself and remount it. And ultimately what we're looking for is this type of scenario here where the stone tracks evenly through the marker all the way down the length of the blade so that the track that's left is the same distance from the edge all the way throughout the whole length of the blade. And when we get this, that's what we call the sweet spot. So thanks for watching. We look forward to sharing more content with you guys like this in the future.